Hello guys, I am Dr. Sora. In previous class, I told you about the hormones. I initiated the body's hormone and the first classification based on structure. Even that wasn't uh, easy. Easy one. <coughs> now, in second class, I have told you previously that in this class, I discuss about the classification based on mechanism of action. Okay, now get ready. I will tell you in very simple facts which are very important and you have to you don't need to mug up but uh, just go through it once or twice and you'll be good to go okay so let's start <coughs> now in uh, by mechanism of action we can divide the hormones into two groups group one hormone and number two check group two hormones group 1 hormones and group 2 hormones so group 1 hormones in this case the receptor will be intracellular and in case the receptor in, in, in group 2 hormones receptor will be on <coughs> plasma membrane Okay, so the first point group 1 hormone the receptor will be intracellular and group 2 hormones will be in plasma membrane. So let's <coughs> go deep into group 1 hormone. There will be some basic differences between group 1 hormone and 2 hormone. So uh, what are they? I will tell you only the basic and salient features of group 1 hormone. That is number 1. Examples. Examples are steroid steroid hormones steroid hormones vitamin a d thyroid hormones t3 t4 etc number two these hormones are lipophilic okay so they need a transport protein for um, traveling okay in previous class I told you about that uh, the hormones which uh, acts away from the source travels through blood and in case of group 1 hormones they travels through blood via a transport protein transport protein so a transport protein makes them to act longer so their T half is I this is the most important four points regarding group one hormones okay and among these steroid hormones vitamin A D and thyroid hormones T T3 T4 etc <coughs> number five signal production via receptor hormone complex okay six gene expression via transcription these are the salient features of group one hormone just go on to it examples are they are lipophilic that's why they need a transport protein traveling and uh, <coughs> due to the transport protein their TR is much much longer of life this stays in the blood, blood for a long time signal reduction a signal production is via RH receptor hormone complex and gene expression is through transcription I will be getting to this now <coughs> in detail so among group 1 hormones they have intracellular receptor okay so we can divide these into again into two types type 1 and type 2 the type 1 hormones with cytoplasmic receptor 
and type 2 hormone with nuclear receptor. So, give one example of type 1 uh, hormone with cytoplasmic receptor. Yes, 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 steroid hormones. Steroid hormones. And type 2 hormone with nuclear receptor. That is, yes, vitamin D, A, T3, T4. Okay. So now coming to type 1 hormone with cytoplasmic receptor. So I, as I have told that uh, suppose it's a cell nucleus, this is nucleus, this is cytoplasm. Okay. <coughs> a steroid, sorry, steroid receptor. Suppose this is a steroid receptor. This is steroid receptor. This is steroid receptor. Steroid receptor. And the steroid act, uh, is a, it, it is an inactive state. Steroid receptor. Inactive state. So, how will it get activated now? When the ligand, ligand means hormone, when steroid hormone binds to it, then its conformational changes occurs and it gets activated. And see, a molecule was previously attached to the um, uh, inactivate inactive receptor and that's that was called HSP 90 heat shock protein 90 and when the ligand ligand here ligand is the steroid steroid <coughs> binds to the receptor it um, changes the conformation of the receptor it gets active and heat shock protein HSP protein 90 gets dissociated and it gets active okay so this is receptor hormone complex understand which i was talking about rh complex receptor hormone complex simple then it's simple rh complex rh complex travels to nucleus binds to the dna and a specific site called gre glucocorticoid response element gre glucocorticoid response and add each point to it and transcription will be initiated resulting gene expression understand how the hormone works so so i am telling again the group one hormone and group two hormone group one hormone the hormones which have receptors intracellular and group two hormones which receptors are present in the plasma membrane so now group 1 hormone intracellular receptor can be <coughs> divided into two types one some hormones have intra cytoplasmic receptor some hormones have intra uh, nuclear receptor okay the uh, so group 1 hormones they uh, possess some basic features six basic features important features you have to remember it and the uh, number one is uh, example that are steroid hormones uh, vitamin a d uh, Thyroid T3 T4 hormones. Number two, they are lipophilic. As they are lipophilic, they require a, a large transport protein to travel and via blood. Okay. So they are T half. Half life is long, much much longer. Number four, 
अच्छा नंबर फाइव इज दे आर सिग्नल प्रोडक्शन इज डन बाय रिसेप्टर हार्मोन कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड जीन एक्सप्रेशन इज बाय ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नाउ आई एम शोइंग दैट ग्लूक हार्मोन और ग्लूक वन हार्मोन साइटोप्लाज्मिक रिसेप्टर स्टेरॉइड हार्मोन्स इज एन एग्जांपल एंड आई हैव ड्रॉन दैट पिक्चर हियर सी इन द साइटोप्लाज्म वन रिसेप्टर व्हिच इज इन इनएक्टिव स्टेट Uh, why is it in inactive state? Because a protein called a heat shock protein 90 it has been bound to it, and so the receptor has been active inactive till now. Then steroid gets bind to it. Conformation of the receptor changes, and heat shock protein 90 gets dissociated, and then it becomes receptor hormone complex. So uh, it's active, and it goes to to nucleus to from cytoplasm. Then it binds to a GRE portion of the DNA. What is GRE? Glucocorticoid response element. And after binding it to it, uh, uh, GRE portion will start transcription and followed by genome gene expression. So that's it. So uh, I have uh, I have not mentioned one fact that this in this mechanism, this receptor. is homodimer just listen to it you will understand this uh, <coughs> five seconds later five minutes later when i will do about i will give another example <coughs> so another can compare another example which is uh, vitamin d vitamin d it also has vitamin d Vitamin D, let's say type 2 hormone with type 2 hormone with intranuclear receptor. Understand? So, vitamin D. So, the active form of the vitamin D is 125 dihydroxy D3, that is calcitriol. So, in the cell nucleus, calcitriol enters and calcitriol binds to it vitamin D receptor, VDR. Okay, so VDR. But calcitriol alone with VDR will not make that active receptor hormone complex. Here, yeah, another thing is needed that is retinoid X receptor. So retinoid, as a retinoid X receptor binds with VDR, which binded with calcitriol. This, this is called the heterodimer, and this makes the receptor hormone complex. Active. It binds to the uh, vitamin D, VDR portion of the DNA, VDA, vitamin D response element and gene expression. Transcription. Gene expression. So understand, just basic difference is that uh, uh, in case of type 1 uh, receptor, uh, type 1 hormone uh, with uh, in the cytoplasmic receptor, <coughs> What happened is the is the here is the receptor is the receptor for the hormone is homodimer. But here the receptor for receptor is the heterodimer. Uh, until the heterodimer forms and uh, receptor hormone uh, complex doesn't get formed and after the formation of the heterodimer it gets activated. Okay. So I think you have understood till now. Now I will tell you about one or two things extra. Which is PPAR receptor. <coughs> PPAR receptor. PPAR receptor is a peroxisomal proliferator related receptor. Peroxisomal proliferator is activated receptor. Alpha or gamma. Alpha, example of alpha, 
which drug stimulate preferences and proliferation and activate the alpha one. That is clopidogrel, and it gets used in this lipidemia. Sorry, sorry, hyper triglyceride. As a triglyceride defense, we can four forty. Then we can use lipid and listen to statins. Okay. Uh, P par gamma. Example: five beta gamma. It is a group of anti-diabetic drug. Yes, anti-diabetic drug. Anti-diabetic drug. <coughs> it is a good from higher to the dinner diets. So it decreases insulin resistance. It is used. Okay. So people gamma example is bicyclidazone. It decreases insulin resistance and people alpha lipid. It is used in hypertriglyceride. So now a new drug has been achieved. A new drug has been discovered or invented that is P par alpha plus gamma action. It can act. It can stimulate both the receptor that is serotonin. Serotonin and it is used in used in diabetic. It is okay. Just remember this. And